Um, Alright, we'll try this one. How would you survive? Grolia Kids. Uh, designed and produced by Emoji. Belly Electronic Publishing. Yeah, skip credits. No, I don't need to register. Oh, I yeah, can't discontinue it. How would you survive as an ancient Egyptian? Okay. Uh, so what can we click on? We got Egyptian, Aztec, or Viking. Alright. We'll try Egyptian first. Okay. Um, no, can we get the introduction? Oh, she's meant to be talking. I think the audio is cut off. Alright. Uh, or just doesn't want to work. Yeah, alright. Skip intro then. Um, yep. Yeah, plenty of cats. Small child. Um, there's a bit drawn in there that probably shouldn't be there. Um, uh, okay. Becoming an ancient Egyptian. When you're old oh! Enough, you'll call one <laughs> yep, banned from Twitch. <laughs> Pretty sure we're not allowed to show breastfeeding on here. What if you tried but couldn't have children? Um, ancient Egyptian families kept every baby that was born on. Brunus noted this with a surprise. Yeah, that's one way to survive. That's just walk. What is going on here? Oh, you may have been born on a birth still. This is a low platform with a central hole on which women squat to give birth. Uh, okay. <laughs> well, I guess, yeah, the... Yeah. If I, if I do get called out for shit like this, I'm just going to argue it's for, you know, scientific research purposes, you know. Totally unexpected my, on my end, too. Um, so what's, what's the whole spiel? Um, yep, kept every baby that was born. Foreigners noticed this with surprise in the ancient world. People living in lands where it was a struggle to survive often left babies to die because they could, because they could not afford to raise them. This was not necessary in Egypt, even for the poorest families. They did not need to buy clothes. The children ran about in the sun and there would have been plenty of bread and fruit to eat. If you were really poor, you could have lived on bald papyrus roots at no cost. Yeah, the baby poop shoot. That's pretty much what that is, isn't it? Uh, you leave babyhood behind and enter a new phase when you first wear clothes. Boys will put on a loincloth and girls will wear a dress. Old people are well cared for. One pharaoh, hearing a wise man was still fit at age 110, arranged for him to be cared for at the palace. You have an important duty to your parents. After their death, you must take food to their tomb regularly so their cars can have nourishment. Reading the baby stars. Let's hope that you've been born on a lucky day. Um, <laughs> this, this feast looking creature was really a very kindly goddess. She is Toret. Uh, no, Toret. Who protects, protects pregnant women. Yeah, fair enough. Um, so what do we got? Oh, marriage. Oh, there's little videos here. Okay. Now showing marriage. Young people look forward to marriage. You can choose the person you want to marry. But your parents or grandparents are expected to introduce you to a suitable mate. Of course, there's a wedding ceremony. Afterwards, the new couple must register the marriage contract they've made. The presents that make up the bride's dowry, that is, all her belongings she will share with her husband, are carried from her father's house to her new home. The bride and groom then take offerings of food to the temple to ask the gods to bless their marriage. It must be a lot. Of, it must have a lot of food to throw around for it to, like go to waste as offerings, isn't there? Um, alright, divorce. Unfortunately, not all marriages are happy. If a wife is treated badly by her husband, she can ask her relatives to help her by going to a judge. The judge might tell her husband to shape <laughs> up or be punished. Hey, shape up, One buddy. One man was told he'd get a hundred <laughs> lashes if he continued his cruelty. Why is that chick carrying a brick on her side. head? It's actually pretty simple. Apparently that was a thing. The yeah, like, just make an you carry heavy shit on your head. The man and woman are then both free to get married again, and the children usually stay with their mother. Ah, oh, even in even back that that far back, kids always go to the mum. That's fair enough. Egyptians love children. People who have none are considered very unlucky. But even if this happens, there are other things to try. The husband takes gifts to the tombs of his relatives in the hope that the gods will send a child. <laughs> Even IVF is on the list for, um, the magic power of you know, <laughs> giving, up, giving away sacrifices. Has the life-giving power of the sun. 
If all else fails, a couple can adopt the child by coming to an agreement with its parents. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's sort of like Egyptian culture's always been a bit weird like that. Like, um, I remember, like, yeah, there's God's offerings, all that sort of thing, but they're apparently fairly advanced medically. I remember seeing something, um... Uh, someone is someone actually doing like brain surgery in like a Egyptian related story. Um, guess we don't have any more videos. Okay. Yeah, no, we only had the three. Okay. Um, so what else we got? Your family, where do you fit in? Begin your new life. Welcome to ancient Egypt. Uh, we gotta find Wally in this picture, I suppose. Oh, and we get info if we click on stuff. What is underneath this canopy? It is, is it a statue or is it a box? Just what is inside it? Uh, probably a dead person. Uh, oh yeah, some mummification stuff. Oh, did we skip past stuff? Hang on, we'll go back. Um, I guess this just sends you related stuff. Yeah, okay, so they're burying someone. Can we get out of that? Yeah. Oh, cool, you get a little cutaway on the houses. That's cool. Yeah, I love when books used to do that. Um, how would you have been expected to behave? Um, we've probably all covered that. How, how did ancient Egyptians relax? What games did they play? It doesn't matter whether you're rich or poor. Yeah, I don't know like if we can get this as like an index some or something. Because so much pleasure can come from a good pet. What kinds of animals are you likely to keep? Oh yeah, so what do we got? A uh, box for playing Senet. Two people can play. The top of the box is the board. The drawer holds the pieces. Dice are thrown to decide the moves. Okay. Hunting in the marches. Um... Oh, yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. Toys. Oh, yeah. Um, tug of war. Ball games. Painted clay balls. Filled with beads. Yeah. Um, what else we got? What do you laugh at? Jokes implying that your masters are up to no good. A lion playing the game of Senet with its play the antelope, prey the antelope. A jackal acting as a kindly goat herd and a cat that cares for birds. These were joke stories, I guess? Okay. Nice little pegboard thing. Yeah, we'll check out pets. Most dogs in Egypt look like this greyhound. Whether they're sheep dogs, hunting dogs, or just everyday pets. Cats are loved so much that when one dies, its owners might shave off their eyebrows in mourning. <laughs> really? A monkey makes a very amusing Okay. Cat. It can be a lot of trouble, though, so unless you're rich and have servants to take care of it, a monkey might not be a good choice for you. This goose is not a household pet, but many people would let it wander in their house for good luck. The goose is sacred to Amun, the wind god. <laughs> Leaves like little paws of good luck all around the house. Um, so what else we got? Oh yeah, here we go. So we just keep coming back to here and then we can get each page. All right. City life is exciting for children, but how you live depends on how wealthy you are. Would you go to school or stay home to learn a trade? How do people shop and what are the markets like? Yeah, fair enough. Hmm. Yeah, okay. A little bit of fun. No, oh, we can only just keep watching these videos. Um, will you go to school? If your parents want you to have a career, they'll certainly send you to school. Off you go, and don't forget your lunch. Some schools are run by priests. Both girls and boys start going to school when they're young, but when girls turn 12, they stop going to school and stay home. At school, plastered boards or flakes of stone are used to write on. Lots of what you do is boring copying and taking dictation you study the wise teachings of past writers and you'd better pay attention if you don't you'll be beaten <laughs> get a little smack nice if your parents are poor you might go to school for a few years but you won't be able what to stay what the hell is he making you'll have to earn a living as soon as possible this boy is going to be a sandal maker like his father yeah. he's left school oh it's a sandal okay father who will teach him all the skills of his trade. The boy learns to cut and sew leather, to use papyrus or palm fibers to weave the soles, and to pull the toe thong And yes, through. girls have things to do after they're 12. The finished exactly. sandals are sold from a stall, which is set up in the street outside their house. 
getting a good price for your work can be tricky. This trainee is learning the art of bartering. Hmm. Mm hmm. Say your mother wants to buy some fish. She can't pay for it with coins because there's no such thing as money. So she has to give something in exchange. <laughs> That's for handy, fish. Matthew. Dope. <laughs> Here, she's making fig cakes to barter with. She sets off for the market carrying a big basket of cakes. She's made enough to buy some vegetables as well. Traders will accept the cakes if they need them, or if they think they can use them to buy some <laughs> Santa make them more like thong liquor. Yeah. How many fig cakes is one fish worth? <laughs> That's when the bargaining begins. Shopping can take a lot of time. To buy something expensive, like an ox, you better have a lot to offer. Maybe linen, or necklaces, or bags of grain. Yeah, fair enough. Hmm. Here's what you might see in a typical market. Over there is a cloth merchant showing the <laughs> Check out my friend's stick. <laughs> no one makes finer linen than the Egyptians. And here's a man bargaining for a slave. Slaves, mm -hmm. usually prisoners of war, are expensive. The price has to be put in writing to avoid disputes. The sun is scorching, and even the shade is hot and dusty. You're thirsty, and so you stop at a drink stall before you start the long walk home. You see lots of men shopping for food. They're probably the kitchen staff from rich houses who've come to the market to buy supplies. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, and it's good that they're like being historically accurate and showing off shit about, you know, slaves and stuff like that. Like, yeah, it was a part of life back then. Um, right. So what else we got? What's the... Oh, map, timeline, basic facts. How do we know? Um, so what's the map? Map of the Egyptian world. Okay. Um, oh, yeah, it shows off the Nile, and you can check each section. Yeah, Giza, Nubia, Valley of the Kings. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, right. What do we got for the timeline? Oh, yeah. Um, Egyptian recorded history begins when Menes, the first emperor, unites Upper and Lower Egypt. Uh, period of the old kingdom is time of prosperity and then building. <laughs> I'm just hearing like Age of Empire noises now. Rogan, Hormuz. Uh, Imhotep builds the first major pyramid for Sakura at King's for King Zosa. Pyramids in the Sphinx are built at Giza during the fourth dynasty for Cheops, Seph Sephrin, and Mycenaeus. The authority of the pharaohs is weakened for local rulers fight for power during the first intermediate period. Yep. Uh, seems to be like a fair bit of information in this one. We still got like Vikings in the other one to cover too. Uh, Asiatic invaders called Hyksos conquer Lower Egypt during the second intermediate period. Oh, we still got Aztecs to cover as well. Yeah, that's going to be fun. Um... God, a fair bit of stuff, yeah, Tutankhamun's, um, death mask thing, Ramses II, oh uh, yeah, waves and invaders, uh, ah, oh, Nubian pharaohs, okay, getting a little bit progressive there, Syrians capture Memphis and Thebes, okay, oh yeah, Persians, yeah, of course the Persians are on over, you've reached the Bronze Age, yeah, <laughs> Alexander the Great. Yeah, fuck off Persians. Alexander's come in. And Egypt's, Egypt's province of the Roman Empire. There you go. Uh, so what do we have for basic facts? Hang on. You click on that properly. Do we get any basic facts? Yeah, there we go. Um, oh, this is like if you're... If you've gone back in time and you're living in Egypt... So this, this is meant to be your survival guide, I guess. Plants. Taming the Nile. Uh, dangers and death. You might expect people to fear crocodiles and diseases, but the ancient Egyptians dreaded evil spirits far more. They believed that most misfortunes were caused by them. Brick pharaohs were Ptolemy, I think. Yeah, sounds about right. Uh, childbirth was dangerous for mothers and babies alike, many of whom died. This counts for the av early average death, probably about 36. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm an old man for um, by Egyptian standards. Oh, you did a bit of Egyptian history in school. Nice, nice. 
Uh, many people live much longer. The Pharaoh Pepe, Pepe the Second ruled for 94 years, longest reign we know of in history. Uh, gods, yep, neighbors. Or well, you say neighbors, they're, they're usually the slaves. Um, yeah, yeah, I know, like I had the the birthing shoot and the um, thing, I, uh, the br woman breastfeeding at the start, but what would get me banned on YouTube is if I called this video uh, Where Was Kangs? Um, all right, so how do we know? How do we know all this information? Uh, the Romans who took over Egypt in 30 BC had no interest in Egyptian ways and did not even try to understand the hieroglyphs. After the Christians closed the last Egyptian temples in the 6th century AD, there was no one left who could read them. The only remaining clues to the history of Egypt were the bi biblical story of Joseph, the reports of Herodotus, and an account written in the 3rd century BC by a priest called Manetho. Uh, he had listed the order and length of the pharaoh's reigns and a few of their deeds. His account is not accurate, but it has helped modern scholars to piece together the events of ancient Egyptian history. The Arabs who came to Egypt in AD 641, yeah, Christians again, they always wreck it, don't they? Uh, this led to the long-held notion of Egypt as a land of sorcery. Bold travellers went to Egypt, but Europeans knew very little until books about its antiquities were printed. From about 1780, newly designed objects sometimes had an Egyptian flavour. This trend became fashionable after Napoleon invaded Egypt in 1798 and had its old monuments recorded. Oh no, fair enough. And that would be Napoleon looking much... Uh, if that's Napoleon, he should be a lot shorter. Unless he's got, like, short friends to kind of compensate for him. Um, Englishman George Sandys, who wrote an account of his visit in 1610... Royal mummies found in secret tombs at Deir el Bahri. Uh, mummies were rediscovered in the late. Yeah, because that was always a thing. It was always like the English explorer that goes to Africa and digs up the tomb to find out information. And yeah, um, I haven't seen the mummy remake, but I've got a fondness for like the older mummy movies with Brendan Fraser. They were good. Um, yeah, fair enough. Uh, so, what was this one? Oh, how have you survived? Oh, so we do, like, questions based on... Yeah, I'll come back to that one. we got to learn more about Egypt, I think. Um, we covered... Yeah, what's the house look like? The kind of house you live in depends on how wealthy you are. How were houses built? What would you see if you looked out the window of your home? And what were the differences between rich and poor houses? Ah, uh, yeah. A couple of families in a house drag me into a room. Oh, you can, like, zoom in on shit. Okay. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, alright. So what was this one? Yes, building. Bricks are the main building material. They are made from a mixture of mud and chopped straw, which is poured into molds and baked hard by the sun. Here are some common building tools. A set square, a mallet, a brick mold, and two plumb lines for making sure the horizontal and vertical surfaces are level. It's a pretty pimp sized house. But they were saying, like, poorer families, like a couple of. If you're poor, you'd have a couple of families in the same house. Supporting beams have to be imported because local palm trees are too flexible. Egypt does not have Yeah, this is basically the first stages of um, Conan Exiles, isn't it? <laughs> Windows are small and high to keep out dust, heat, and glare. If you look out your window, what do you see? If your house is near the town centre, there's a lot going on. You see traders with their stalls along the road, making it crowded and hard for people to walk by. You hear the sounds of bargaining and a smell of a thousand different aromas. <laughs> Mostly so shit. From wine, women bringing water from the well, officials pushing their way through the crowd. It's a view of activity and excitement. Well, I did hear about that as too. Uh, one of the other, like, they couldn't do... Couldn't didn't have many trees to chop for uh, firewood and stuff, so fires to be made with like either dry straw or um, dried cow shit, garden. or yeah, you know, livestock shit and stuff like that. Neat paths, rectangular pools, and small pavilions. You see gardeners tending and watering plants. The garden is very peaceful. A high wall keeps out noise and intruders. Yeah, that's how you know you're rich that you've got a fucking working garden in a, in a desert. Visitors. It's a view of calm and tranquility. Yeah, fair enough. Cities have many avenues of fine buildings, 
but working people are crammed into packed, unplanned streets. Because the streets are crowded, city children use the rooftops for their playgrounds. They run easily from one to another. Ah, so the earliest examples of uh, parkour. Of rooms for the owner, and another set for the women of the house. It has a garden <laughs> for the band again. And when the family goes to the naked house, children, the children have even more room to play. Yeah, right. Um. So I'll sort of have. Um. Yeah, I might just uh, cherry pick because we still got you know Vikings and Aztecs to check out. Uh, women in society. Yeah, we'll we'll go along this way. Everyone needs to eat, and everyone wants to eat well. How would you make bread or beer or wine? What kinds of foods are available, and where do they come from? Hmm. Ooh, roast meat, garlic salad. Yeah, what's this question mark thing? Your neighbor's wife is a glean, and what does this mean? Oh, that takes me to the other area. Okay. Fair enough. Yep. Yeah, I found that out as well. Yeah, so... Um, a lot of a lot of the staples were like wheat and flour, but um, apparently the uh, milling systems were a bit shit back then. So you'd usually have like small pieces of rock in with your flour. So if you had bread or something, yeah, and yeah, apparently um, dentistry wasn't a thing. Like the little rocks would just wear down your teeth over time. I might actually tell us about it in this bread one. Bread is the staple of your diet. Here's how to make it. First, you and they're flour. like, yeah, also drink Maybe the beer because the water's the just going to be full of parasites. It's easier if you add a little to the <laughs> the hell are you up to, kids? Come on, put a wine cloth on or something. Especially when you're making milk. If you want to make sweet bread. Then shape the dough into loaves. Bake the loaves in an oven if you have one. If not, you can cook the dough in pots stacked over a fire. Ah, oh, yeah. Yeah, that'd be a way to do it. Let's make some beer. To make beer, crumble half-cooked barley bread in a large vat. Add water that has been sweetened with dates. The mixture will soon ferment. The liquid will be very lumpy, so you'll have to strain it into jars. Tightly seal the tops of the jars with clay and store them in a cool place. When it's We're ready, in a desert. The beer where is, where is a cool thick. place? You'll probably need to strain it again. Some people drink it straight from the jar with a drinking tube. <laughs> That's how I'd roll, definitely. Right, it makes some wine. Wine is very popular in Egypt. There are vineyards in the Delta, which is at the mouth of the Nile River, and grapevines are often grown in trellises in large gardens. The ripe grapes are put in a big trough. Holding onto ropes to keep their balance, treaders press out the juice with their bare feet. The grape juice is poured into jars to ferment. When fermentation stops, the jars are sealed and dated, and the wine is left to age. Yep. Okay. Yes, what can you eat? There's a wide variety of vegetables you can grow. Egyptians, yeah. Many peasants even have their Egyptian own vegetable straws. gardens. Geese, ducks, pigeons, and cranes are raised for food. Some of the birds are... Oh, what the hell does crane it taste like? You can buy food... Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, the whole... I forgot that was the thing, yeah. A lot of states are trying to phase out plastic. Um, last time I went to KFC, I, had to get, I got, like, a wooden spoon. Uh, no, a cardboard spoon with my um, potato and gravy. Um, so, yep, yeah, we did that one. What else we got? Food and drink. Yeah, let's see what they said about women in society. Women may not have full equality, but they have many rights and privileges that might surprise you. I could own property, own wages, yeah. What is life like for a peasant woman, for a priestess? Bartering. Hmm. Yeah, it wouldn't have been. It wouldn't have had an education. That's right. Uh, woman could become pharaoh, but this was extremely unusual. Yeah, didn't they have to like make one up as a boy or something? As a married woman or widow. Can't remember who that was specifically. Like your own property. Here's a woman signing a contract. You can inherit separately from your husband. If a will seems unfair to you, you can challenge it in the courts. If your marriage ends in divorce, you can take your own property and children and are free to marry again. In your will, you choose who you want to receive your property. It doesn't have to go to your family. <laughs> Not my bitch of a wife who took everything from me. She's out of the will. As a peasant, your days are long with little time to rest. 
You wake up at dawn to boil grain for your family's breakfast. After the men have gone off to the fields, you walk to town with eggs and homemade mats to sell. When market is over, you clean and grind and bake and then join your neighbors to spin cloth. Under a hot noontime sun, you carry fresh bread to the fields for the men. You stay to glean with the other women. You see two women fighting because one spilled the other's basket and claimed her gleanings. Oh. In the evening, you get dinner ready and lock up the animals for the night. After all this, you still find time for basket making. Oh, fair enough. Yeah, and priestess <laughs> seems to be a bit cushier. And you have an easy life. You wake up between cool linen sheets and call for your maid to dress you. When your makeup is finished, also your apparently 100% fair, fair divorce to take your own shit and leave the, the end. Move out of the way as yeah, that's the temple. that's 100% fair. Don't see that happening often though. Time. This month, you're a dancer in the temple chorus. Afterwards, your time is your own. Ah, so I'm presuming you've got to be hot to be a priestess as well if you don't dance and then stuff. Can be spent entertaining. Or you might choose to spend time playing I wonder if they husband. touch on eunuchs at all because they had eunuchs back then. Uh, we'll find out, I suppose. About women. This is a sistrum, a kind of rattle used in ceremonies at the temple. It's modeled after Hathor, the goddess of love, music, and dancing. Here's a drawing of a girl putting on makeup. Lipstick comes from an iron <laughs> oxide. The green and black eyeshadow comes from copper and lead. If oh, that can't be good rich, for you. Heavy metals lines. on your face. If that's the case, you'll have to share the women's quarters with them. Women, like men, may be ceremonially honored by the pharaoh and showered with gifts of gold. Yeah, cool. I oh, can't imagine that going wrong. <laughs> Here's some gold you throw a bag at someone's head. Um, so what was this one? Uh, if you're the- oh. I it's just a little- you. Oh, huh? I told you I'd be your guide, and I'll stick with you on all your travels. Oh, that's if you, you need help. It? Okay. Um, yep, yeah, Larger States did that one. Uh, what else do I want to check out? Yeah, do a bit on clothes. There are many practical things about clothing you might want to know. For example, how was linen made? How would you get dressed? How would you wash your clothes? What special dressing rules do priests follow? Oh, that's a stripper for pulling off flax seeds. Yeah, fair enough. Man holds one down with his foot in the scene of a wall painting. Okay. Ooh, gazelle skin looks pretty pimp for a loincloth. Nice. Alright. See how you make linen. Almost all your clothes are made from linen. But how is linen made? It starts with a common plant called flax, which must be pulled out of the ground instead of being cut. This is back-breaking work, so it's usually done by men. The stems of the plant are soaked for a few days to separate the fibers. Then the fibers are beaten until they're soft. The spinner attaches fibers to a spindle <laughs> and twists them to let the spindle drop. This makes a strong thread, which can be woven into cloth. Weaving cloth is done on a loom, a frame made of two beams and held by four pegs driven into the ground. Hmm. That sounds like a lot of work. You never get dressed without washing first. Wealthy homes have a tiled wash area where water is poured over you. This wealthy woman lives in comfort. After her maid has bathed her, she rubs herself all over with sweet-smelling oil. Over a narrow shift, she puts on a large rectangle of transparent linen. There's a hole in the center for her head to go through. She drapes the cloth carefully, drawing the sides together below her chest. Then she ties it in a knot. Now it's time for her makeup. She mixes different color mineral powders with oils to make up her face. Her maid brings today's wig, which is made of human hair. Elaborately curled wigs are worn on special occasions. Hmm. Okay. White linen clothes need lots of washing. Oh, I can imagine. You find it easier to do this near the river or canal. You rinse them, pound them on a stone, then bleach them in the sun. Very thin garments are often finely pleated. To put back the pleats after washing, a wooden board is used. The damp cloth is pressed into grooves on the board, then left to dry. Here's what you wear on your feet. The sandals on the left are made of papyrus, on the right of palm fiber. Usually you walk barefoot and carry your sandals, putting them on only when necessary. Oh, okay. 
A priest must follow very strict rules of cleanliness. He washes several times a day and keeps his head shaven. In fact, he has to remove all his body hair in order to be pure oh, that's to be fun. God. He plucks his hair out with tweezers. <laughs> he puts on freshly washed linen. He can't wear wool, which is considered unclean. The same goes for leather sandals. I think can't wear leather. Oh, they can wear leopard skin, but not leather. Omni. Okay. In many cults, the priests wear no wig. Hmm. Okay. Um, so what was the last one I wanted to check out? Yeah, we're doing Egypt, so we got to check out mummification, don't we? People plan carefully for their journey to the next world. Are there different kinds of mummies? How is a mummy made? What is a funeral like? Mm -hmm. What is life like in the next world? Yeah, okay. You get what you pay for, even when it comes to mummies. Here, an embalmer shows a customer wooden models of different mummy styles. Cheap, mid-range, and luxury treatments. The least expensive way is to have the body injected with cedar oil, so that its insides will liquefy and drain That's out. The, the, it is then packed that noise in necessary. a kind of mineral salt, and left for about 40 days. The natron stops gotta, the rotting and drives the body. Gotta pull out all those organs, I suppose. The family then collects the body for the burial. The body will be shriveled. You gotta do it for the whole video, though? Dry. Just that noise? Ugh. Ugh. Okay. To make a top-quality mummy, the corpse is cut open and the insides removed. The brain is drawn out through the nose. The liver, stomach, <laughs> and other organs are each stored in a special jar. The heart is left inside the body because it will be needed in the afterlife. The body is then put in natron for about a hundred days to be dried out. A lifelike appearance is important. Parts of the body that might sag or shrink are packed with wads of cloth. The body is wrapped in many layers of linen. This is the worst ASMR I've ever heard. His journey to the next world. A face mask completes the mummy. It's made of compressed paper painted to look like the dead man. Yeah, fair enough. At the funeral, the mummy in its case is drawn along on a special sled. It has to cross the river because people are only buried on the west side where the sun goes down. A priest performs a ceremony <laughs> which wakes up the senses of the dead. Priests take the mummy to its underground tomb where a stone coffin has been prepared. Everything the dead man will need goes into the tomb, either the real objects or models. The last person to leave sweeps away all footprints and seals oh, the that was a thing too. Yeah, the usually they put the actual servants in the tomb with them. It's always a fun job. I think they changed the around eventually. They just put like a model representing them or something. Its sins must not outweigh the feather of truth. The results are recorded by thought. Heavy hearts are eaten by a monster. The good enter a happy world where wheat and barley grow tall. You should arrange for little figures like these to be put in your tomb. In the next life, they'll do all the hard work that's expected of you. While servant figures tend your fields and do your work on the heavenly canals, you can feast beneath the sacred tree. Hey, yeah, cool. Sounds like a fun deal. Um, so where do we go? Oh, there's like a couple of pages. Oh, no. Yeah, all right. Let's um, see if we can jump out and switch to the um, the other ones. Uh, let's do Vikings first. We've got to check out Vikings, I think. Uh, welcome to the land of the Vikings. Yeah. Lots of tents, lots of longboats. Looks like fun. Uh, family clothes, ships, traveling, society, farming, religion. Yeah, I might check out farming. From its name, you might think Iceland is covered in ice, but it's not. It's actually a good place to farm, even if it is cold. What is a farming year like in Iceland? What would your day be like if you were a farmer's wife? Hmm. Yeah, fair enough. Okay. The farming year begins in April when the snow melts. It's time for plowing the fields and planting grain. In early spring, the walls around the home meadow are repaired, where the frost has damaged them. By the end of May, the lambs are old enough to be taken from their mothers. The adult sheep are shorn of their fleece. Millions of seabirds nest on the cliffs near the shore. May and June are the time for gathering their eggs. Mm. 
I yeah, didn't think of that. I don't want a seabird egg it tastes like. Butter and soft cheeses are made from it. The dairy products are sent to the coast, where they can be sold or traded for salt and fish. August is the time for making hay. Even small patches of long grass must be cut. In early September, the grain is harvested. The cattle are allowed to graze on the stubble left on the fields. In October, with winter coming, the herds are rounded up. Some animals may have strayed far away. And fuel has to be stored. Trees are cut for wood and slabs of peat are stacked up. Autumn is also the time when most animals time are Time for the slaughter. There's no <laughs> enough food for all of them to survive. The meat is packed in salt. With so much fresh meat available, this is the time for having feasts and celebrating weddings. <laughs> Sheep and goats can't stay outdoors during the winter nights. But by day, they nibble grass through the snow. Cows have to live indoors day and night. They're kept in cow sheds called byres all winter long. The long, dark winter months are the time for indoor work, like making tools or repairing boats. Mm, fair enough. You are a farmer's wife. In the morning, you drive the boar <laughs> to the off, egg. to fatten. Had enough of your shit. She alone is allowed to eat the best <laughs> grass. You're also in charge of the pigs, the chickens, and the housework. Today, there's fresh fish to clean and prepare for drying. You supervise the work. Weaving takes all your spare time. Cloth is one of the few products you have to offer foreign traders. In the evening, you do the milking. And at busy times, like haymaking, you have to work hard in the fields. Hmm. Busy day. Um, so what else do we have for... Yeah, let's see what family's like. Family life is very important to you. As head of a Viking family, what kind of life would you lead? What is a typical day like for a woman in charge? Most fat cows can't handle cold weather, and those bovines don't deal too well with it either. True that. Yeah, especially down here. Um, you'll see farmers actually building bonfires to keep the cows warm when they're out at night. The head of a wealthy family leads a busy life. Here he's going off to the fields to see how his workers are getting on with the harvest. Afterwards, he spends an hour with his son, teaching battle skills. He shows him how to use a shield to defend himself. <laughs> Today, son, I'm going to teach you how to rape. Set the thing, an assembly that decides the important local issues. As he and his companions set off on a raiding expedition, the women of the family wave goodbye. Yep. A woman in charge. A wife okay. is in complete charge while her husband is away from home. Here, she directs the farm work. She keeps the key to the storehouse where meat, barrels of ale, and other supplies are kept. She orders a slave to take butter, cheese, and three cows to the marketplace. When some suspicious-looking characters show up at the house, <laughs> the wife leads an attack on them. I told you to get off my lawn. She directs the women workers as they get dinner ready. Afterwards, everyone gathers around as she tells Who us... Who drew this by shit, the by the way? <laughs> pretty, pretty terrible. Um, so what else we got? Um, yeah, let's check it. Society. Viking society was very <laughs> It's not a joke. From the highborn to the Until you yell surprise. Like <laughs> or if it's done by a clown. I remember that one too. <clears throat> a king is born, not made. He must have royal blood, but he must also have the support of the chiefs he rules over. He rewards his loyal followers with gifts of gold, silver, and land. Missionaries want to build a church. The king consults the thing about this. The king visits the most powerful earls to discuss plans for defense. The earl from a frontier region brings news. There's been an enemy invasion. The king values his honor more than his life. He leads the fight and dies in the battle. Yeah, cool. Um, well, it's a slave's life. Let's see what a they get up to. A slave's life is hard. He's up at dawn to make sure the fire hasn't gone out. Next, the animals must be fed and the stables and cow sheds cleaned. At meals, the slave eats at the far end of the table. A slave sleeps wherever he can, on the floor or with the animals. Hmm. Sounds like a bit of a shit life, but anyway. 
Uh, what else we got? Um, yeah, let's look at right and wrong. In the violent Viking lifestyle, it may seem as though people don't care about laws or even about life and death. But this isn't true. What happens if two families start a blood feud? What values do the Vikings accept as the most important? Do you know that the... Oh, what do you got cut off again? The most famous Viking of all, Eric the Red, was once banished from his home? Hmm. How does a blood feud start? Let's say a man named Bjorn insults another man named Harald. Harold draws his sword and kills Bjorn. A witness runs and tells Bjorn's parents. The family meets to discuss their options. Do they accept payment for the wrongful death? Or decide to get even? In this case, they choose revenge. Perhaps Bjorn's brother attacks and kills a relative of Harold's. Now, someone from Harold's family goes after another member of Bjorn's. <laughs> Just that's Back quite and from forth there. it goes. After many months of killing, the families decide to end the feud. They agree to let judges settle the dispute and decide on the compensation. Oh, okay. Viking values. Honor. For a Viking, the greatest disgrace is being a coward. He must be ready to fight anyone who insults him or his family. He swears loyalty to a lord and does everything he can to support him. A Viking would never surrender. He would fight alongside his comrades until the Waiting with suspense for this young girl to talk about blood eagling. Oh yeah, fucking I forgot about that. This is when they like open up the rib cage and shit like that, isn't it? Even the poorest person is generous. As a Viking, you must welcome travelers and give them food, shelter, and protection. You may need the favor returned one day. Vigilance. Danger is never far away. An angry neighbor may be looking for revenge. Pirates may attack, or there may be foreign enemies in the land. You won't last long unless you're always ready for action. There's a saying, the wise man is never parted from his weapons. <laughs> I've only just noticed, Friends, like, the Viking dudes just vaping up the top here. The person being eagled the screams they don't get to go to Valhalla. Oh, fuck that off. To form a fellowship for a joint purpose. For example, before starting out on a raid. Ruthlessness. Vikings show no mercy to That's their probably enemies, a nun. Or sometimes even to their own people. Oh no, they don't some... raise weak and sickly babies who might become weak and sickly adults. Once, during a famine in Iceland, the old and the sick were thrown over cliffs. <laughs> Shit. Vikings can't afford to be kind. <laughs> Rough justice. Disagreements can be settled by a fight. Duels are held where three roads meet. They're fought with swords and shields, but because wooden shields splinter easily, each man is allowed three. The winner of the duel is thought to have been right all along. <laughs> I kind of wish we'd go back to that system. It was the year 982. Just, in yeah, it'd be a reason to stay in shape. Red, a just to Norway, settle arguments. argued with a nearby farmer and killed him. He was brought before the thing where 36 judges heard his case and banished him for three years. Eric sailed away with some friends. They it's murder some seals. Covered with ice and spent the time there. In an effort to convince others to join him, he called this new place Greenland, even though it wasn't oh, he found at Greenland. All. Okay. A few years later, I don't know much about Eric arrived. the Red. They sort of go on about um, Ragnar Lothbrok, don't they? Um, okay, what else we got? Uh, I might do one more and then we'll switch to Aztecs because Aztecs have been the most fun. Uh, okay, health. Keeping clean and staying healthy isn't easy. What the hell's in going on here? Society? What are some healthy oh, this is a toilet apparently. And you gotta empty your own shitter. Yeah, that's fair. Some not so clean ways of washing. How about the sick? How are they cared for? And how is a battle wound diagnosed? Oh, I want to learn about that. How you diagnose a battle wound? Um. Oh, that's apparently an old wooden toilet seat. Okay, seam bath watching. Oh yeah, yep. Yeah. All right, let's read these. In the cold north, a steam bath feels great. The bathhouse is a separate building that features a drain in the center and a fire to heat stones. 
When the stones become red hot, <laughs> water is splashed on So many naked people in this speed. scene. <laughs> the idea is to sit and swelter in the heat. If you like English thought that the Vikings bathed too much. Fair enough, you dirty water, English wankers. <laughs> with a bundle of twigs. This opens your pores and makes you sweat. Then, to tone up, you should go outside and roll in the snow. <laughs> Fun and games. Still a tradition they have today. Cleanliness may not have been too important to the Vikings. According to one witness, here's how Viking traders washed. First, a slave brought a bowl of water. One of the Viking men washed his face and hair. He sneezed and blew his nose into the water. Oh, the old Bushman tanky. The nice. The next man. The bowl was oh, you gotta pass it to the next guy. <laughs> and blown his nose all in the same bowl of water. Gross. That's gross. <laughs> and this is, yeah, the second guy who used the bowl. Here's how a sick man might be treated. First, he's put in a tent by himself. Actually, this is a good way to prevent disease from mm -hmm. spreading. Quarantine, very good. The invalid is left alone with some bread and water to eat if he feels strong enough. Apart from this, he gets almost no attention. If he's a slave, he's left entirely by himself. If the sick man is lucky enough to recover, he rejoins his companions. But if he dies, his body is burned. A slave is thought not to be worth burning. His body is left in the open to be eaten by wild animals or vultures. Oh, fun. Okay. Battle wounds are very serious. Let's say a raiding party meets resistance, and a Viking is wounded by a spear. He's carried back to the camp. His companions wash the wound and give the victim some onion porridge to eat. Yeah. The porridge is not for nourishment. It helps his companions determine whether there's any hope of recovery. If they can smell the onions <laughs> through the wound, they know that the stomach has been pierced and the man... Ah, that's a clever idea. Yeah, fair enough. So don't don't get a gut wound, I suppose. Oh, that's just playing that again. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> so what have, what's the count for, like, crazy things we've had so far? A woman giving birth, lots of breastfeeding, naked chick, guy having a shit. Um, God, where do we go from here? Uh, yeah, all right. Let's shift on the Aztecs. Don't get a gut wound. Use a shield. Exactly. Uh, all right. Yeah, like, I always found the Aztec side of things the most interesting. Like, I've actually played a lot of related games to it as well. Games related to it, I should say. the great city of Tenochtitlan begun? What's it like inside the palace of the Tlatuani? Hmm. Okay. Let's have a look at the, the videos for this one. Oh, yeah, the chick having a baby shit. Here's yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> First, dig up some mud from the river and mix it's it with the best water way to, to describe it, isn't it? Like dough. Having a baby shit. Pack this mixture into a wooden mold. Pack it tight to avoid air bubbles that could make the brick too fragile. Leave the brick in the hot sun to dry until it's baked hard. You'll need hundreds of bricks to make a house. Finally, you can use your bricks for building. More mud is used as mortar, which holds them all together. Yeah, straightforward. I like how they, yeah, they've done it up like a little <laughs> Toltec theater. I like that. After the walls of your house are built, you need to make a roof out of leaves or reeds. For good insulation, you want a layer at least one foot thick. Next, you need lime wash to waterproof and decorate the outside of your house. To make lime wash, workers dig up limestone from the mountainside, then burn it. The burnt limestone crumbles into powder. It can then be mixed with water to coat oh, the walls. Yeah. You can add different colored sands and earth to the lime wash to make different colored paint. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Alright. To Nochtitlan. No one knows exactly where the Aztecs came from, but there's a legend about how they chose the spot for their great city, Tenochtitlan. As the story goes, the Aztecs left their homeland after a drought and wandered in the desert for many years. They carried statues of their god, Huitzilopochtli, because they believed he would guide them. According to the legend, Huitzilopochtli sent a message in a dream. The dream message said, Build your city where you see an eagle with a snake sitting in a cactus. When they saw such a sight, they stopped their wandering. Tenochtitlan had been founded. The city of Tenochtitlan is built on land that has been reclaimed from the shallow, marshy lake. 
in the waterfront districts of the city, many of the streets are actually canals. Citizens travel in flat-bottom canoes. Flat-bottom canoes, you make the rock and world go round. The Aztec leader, called the Tlatuani, lives in a grand palace. He receives visitors in an impressive hall. They must bow low before him. There are peaceful flower gardens. It's been a couple of years since I played it, but I did enjoy it. Um, was it the Crystal zoo. Skull? Other and, um, have to send gifts to what's the his face? Um, the palace has storerooms. Adama from uh, the Battle Saga Galactic remake is like a shaman. Keep records of all the goods that arrive to check that the tribute has been paid in full. Hey, cool. All right. Um, yeah, there's the exit. All right. So what else we got for Aztec stuff? Um, oh yeah, government. Aztecs have their lives very organized <laughs> It's Pink Guy's ancestor. Controlled by a strong central government. Like He's gonna do some mad raps about Tawani's battles. Palace? Who were the Tlatuani? And when did they rule? What happens if you're caught These guys need some pants, though. So. Everything I ever see about Aztecs always remind myself to think, thank the Spanish for the destroying a culture by being the biggest cats on planet Earth. Yeah. <laughs> They did a fucking good job on that, didn't they? See if you are a visitor to the palace. To begin with, there's the Siwa Koat, the Tlatuani's right hand. Well, they sort of bring that up, like. There's bodyguards. Yeah, um, Apocalypto covered that well. Recording the Tlatuani. Showing like the end of the era, like yeah, just not doing things, sacrificing everyone, fucking not taking care of the bodies. There would also be entertainers. Tumblers, acrobats, musicians. Yeah, having all dancers. the diseased bodies go back in the fucking river where people are drinking. Um, oh no, skip one. No, we got to Aztec rulers. Here okay. Are the names of the Aztec kings called the Tlatuani. Yeah, God, the Spanish. Fucking Spanish, right? <laughs> what is this drawing, though? Gmail Popoca. Eats Coat. Monte Exoma, the first. Oh, these are the rulers, okay. And that's the sigil, I suppose. Diesel. <laughs> What's that? What's that for a sigil? Monte Exoma, the second. In the year 1520, the land was ruled go. by Hernan Cortes, the Spanish conqueror. In the final years of the Aztec Empire, there were two more Tlatuani who ruled. Quitlahuac. Yeah, fair enough. All right. If a man is caught committing a crime, he's brought before a judge. No excuses are allowed. If he's a first-time offender, he might get off easy, being kept prisoner in a cage for a while or having his house destroyed. These are considered light punishments. Repeat offenders might be strangled. Other severe punishments include being made a slave or chosen for human sacrifice. <laughs> Old people aren't punished for certain crimes, like public drunkenness. But for the same offenses, young people are clubbed to death. No oh, shit. Okay. Fair enough. Um, what else we got? Government. Yeah, I'll have a look at family. Extended families are normal in Aztec life. You probably live with your parents, grandparents, and maybe even your great-grandparents. What's an Aztec childhood like? How are children taught right and wrong? Who gives lessons on how Yeah, alright, alright, we're about to watch that. Aztec children have a lot in common with children everywhere. If you're a boy, you go to school. You specialize in religious studies or Aztec history. You also learn to help with household chores, like collecting firewood for cooking. Learning how to fight and handle weapons is another part of your education. Boys are praised for being quick and strong. As a child, though, you learn to take second place to your parents, grandparents, and all older people. Yep. Learn your place, younger. Learning right from wrong and being punished for your mistakes uh, is a part of Aztec yeah, childhood. Yeah, what's going on here? And some of the punishments are pretty severe. For example, children as young as 11 or 12 might be made to breathe smoke from burning chili peppers. Oh, fuck that. They might be tied up and left outside all night. Parents are responsible oh, yeah. for teaching their children the practical skills they need to support themselves in their adult lives. Oh, chili pepper smoke, that sounds a bit fucked up. Girls do not go to school. Instead, they're taught by their mothers and grandmothers how to run a home. This includes learning how to spin thread and how to weave cloth using a backstrap loom. It also includes learning how to prepare meals mm, for your family. Tortillas. You're taught how to cook tortillas, 
a kind of pancake made from maize. You have to learn to do housework, too, something the boys don't have to worry about. The earth floor of your home is kept clean with a broom made of twigs or grass. Yeah. Yeah, because the priest got school, it easy. You might be chosen to train as a priest. Girls Can't wait till we get to the, the tamales. Priesthood. Yes. It's not as common. Your training includes studying the night sky to predict the movement of the planets, the sun, and the moon. You might be tattooed with sacred designs. Ooh, this can ah, be a very ee. painful process. You learn how to help the priests in the temple and how to say prayers and even make sacrifices. So the priests were like the hipsters of Aztec times? They don't mention tamales, right? Yeah. Um, have we got anything food related? Maybe. Well, let's, yeah, let's find out a bit. But actually, we'll do wars first. The Aztecs are an aggressive, warfaring nation. Oh, he's got like eagle boots. What are eagle okay. knights and jaguar knights. What's involved in deciding to attack a city? Epic meal what times. <laughs> Soldiers who have proven yeah, maybe it's the maybe this is the ancestry of YouTube. Knights. Like, yeah, we have jaguar epic meal time. Secret fighting we had like night. pink they guy's ancestor. Eagle knights are trained to make surprise raids at dawn. <laughs> no, the priest is like how to basic temple. just throws eggs at shit. Festivals. Soldiers have many opportunities to win status and respect. It's the only way ordinary men can become nobles. There is a mealtime category? Okay. Um, I'll go through these and we'll check them. When the Aztec rulers decide to conquer a city, they follow a set plan. First, they send a group of ambassadors. The ambassadors ask the city leaders for a treaty of friendship and a rather large payment of gold. The city leaders have 20 days to decide what to do. They're warned that to refuse the offer will mean war. Meanwhile, the Aztecs get ready for battle. After the 20 days, the ambassadors return to ask what decision has been made. If the city refuses the treaty, Aztec priests tell the soldiers when it's a good time to attack. The Aztec army assembles in battle formation in the temple precinct. A huge task force sets out to attack the city, now considered an enemy. Each army unit marches separately, led by proud flag carriers. They must conquer the enemy city or else they get no food. Army discipline is strict. If soldiers disobey orders, they'll be killed. Yep, there you go. After the conquest. When the fighting is over, surviving Aztec troops go home. The Aztecs don't keep garrisons in conquered cities. Yeah, An Aztec rough. noble or army commander is appointed governor of the conquered Victory city. Victory of starvation, yeah. Conquered cities are required to pay a rich tribute. If they don't, they'll be punished severely. Captives must work as slaves, or else they might be sacrificed. Mm -hmm. um, so what do you got? It was the epic, epic meal time. Uh, home workshops, government measuring time, end of the empire. Meal times, there we go. Everyone likes to eat well. And Aztecs yeah. have a healthy Most diet. Corn. How is maize turned into flour? How do you make tortillas? What kinds of food come from the lake? Spicy what beans, gruel out of seeds from wild sage plants called... Oh, they made gruel out of chia seeds. Okay, okay. Yeah. Cause I can never figure out like um, any other recipes to use chia seeds and I usually just put it on top of yogurt. Um, apparently fairly good for you. Victory for the tomatoes. The staple yes. of your diet is maize. From maize you get the grain to make flour. First, take the kernels of corn off the cob, throw away any rotten ones, and clean the rest. Now soak them in lime water. This helps your body absorb all the nutrients they contain. That's Spread the soaked grains out in the sun. Make sure they dry completely, or else they'll become moldy. Grind them between two stones to make coarse flour. This is hard work. Your arms may get tired. Fair enough. Get going. Oh no, we got. Let's we to get tamales tortillas. next. You mix maize flour with water to make a sticky dough. Being careful not to get it too wet. Knead the dough, then roll it out thin. Shape it into cakes. Cook the tortillas on a big pottery dish over an open fire or in a dome-shaped clay oven. Turn them over to get them crisp on both sides. You can crush chili peppers for a sauce in this pottery grater. It has a rough crisscross pattern on the bottom. Serve your sauce in a decorated bowl. Alright. Have the bristles. Alright, get some vicious too. The warm, too. shallow waters of Lake Dates Coco. What have we got here? Yeah, um, this one's called, um, breeding ground for How Do You Survive? Uh, Anchor of Time. So it's, lizards, yeah, just showing, like, historical stuff. I think we had, um, yeah, good to see you too, man. 
Uh, what is it? You Cover, Aztecs, Vikings, and, and um, floating on the lake. what was the first one we had? Egyptians. Treats. They're also free. Just, yeah, getting some learnings in. Um, oh, that was about grubs. Okay. That sounded like fine. Aztecs find wild foods to eat in the deserts and rainforests. The delicacies include cocoa beans, used for a chocolate drink called chocolate. Hmm. Inside the sharp spines of the... Call me Anka to save breath noise, Anka. Oh, good. But be careful not to hurt yourself trying to get to it. Yeah, Our I've had prickly treat. pears. They're actually First, quite nice. They're considered a luxury but food. obviously, yeah, you got to scrub off all the prickles and stuff. polished and used to make musical instruments. Wild black bees gather nectar from all kinds of flowers. The honey is delicious, and the bees don't have stingers. We call it chocotola. Yeah. <laughs> yep, the important one. How to make beer. beer called pulque is made from the mugay cactus. Brewers ah, pull the cactus beer. Out of okay. A plant. This yeah, they're definitely interesting, aren't they? They always like sap. this is up there with Encarta and stuff in terms of like um, videos and gathered, like. It's mixed with old, extra strong pulque and left to ferment. Before you decide to drink the pulque, keep in mind that young people can be executed for getting drunk. Yeah, yeah, they did mention that, didn't they? Um, so what else do we have? What the hell is that? Would you eat your dog? The Aztecs bred hairless dogs to cook and eat on festival days. They were treated well, but like farm animals, not pets. Aztec dogs did not bark. This was important where a city, in a city where 300,000 people live close together. Yeah, that's fair. Oh, biddies. Yeah, yeah, I know. I've been a bit slack on um, stream and anchor. Just it's been a bit cold, been trying to find a job. But no, thank you for the biddies, well. Yeah, no, I'll put in an effort, mate. Definitely. Um, so what do we got? Oh, yeah, we got a few other good ones here. Um, but we'll, we'll leave the, um, that'll be about Hernan Cortez there. I'll leave that to last. Medicine is an inexact science in Aztec life. But since everyone gets sick sooner or later, there had better be cures. What are some of the common cures oh, yeah, steam for baths. What is faith healing all about? Oh, tobacco was a medicinal plant. Pe peyote was medicinal. Okay. Um, Aztecs used the dangerous mind-altering drugs found in these plants to help diagnosis. They believe that the drug patient made contact with the spirit world and learned the cause of their illness. Nice. What happens to Psychedelics for fucking medicinal diagnosis. When you're sick, That's cool. How do you get better? If you go to a doctor, he'll most likely prescribe herbal medicines. You could put your trust in magic charms and amulets like these. Perhaps a special diet will help. For example, you don't eat meat when you're sick. Yeah, that's or you might cool. fast. I always that feel is, better with give up veggies. Food altogether for a few days. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, no, that works out. Yeah, because I think um, it's it's always hard to work out what time it is on the um, other side of the world, just because we get daylight savings Aztecs and stuff as well. The gods can make you sick. But yeah, well this again. is usually when I get the um, American viewers, or American Canadian. Sick children. Certain gods send certain diseases. For example, uh, meek meek causes coughs, and Tlaloc gives you ulcers. You could try hmm. to persuade the gods to cure you by making offerings of food. The gods might listen to your prayers. They might also speak to you in dreams. Or they might decide it was time for you to die. <laughs> It's just like that the shaman just goes, you fucked. Sorry, bud. As a child, yeah. you learn to clean your teeth with a mixture of salt and charcoal. Oh, coffee time with honey, you reckon, mate. If you get right. a toothache, you use a poultice of worms and pine resin, which kills bacteria. If this doesn't just work, finish you can this one and I'll go make another coffee. Against the painful tooth. This will help to numb it. Yeah. Okay. Some people oh, relieve the pain oh, by pricking their gums with a needle. Oh, this is very no. dangerous, though, because it spreads bacteria. Yeah, I can imagine. If all else fails, the tooth must be pulled out. Use strong thread Oof. and pull hard. Fill the cavity with salt. This will help reduce the risk of infection. Yeah, that's actually a good idea. All right, I'll go on break quickly and we'll, um, yeah, make a coffee with some honey. All right, we're back. Sorry about the wait, guys. Um, yeah, made me coffee with honey. Um, yeah, I found Scooter's Magic Castle. It's actually downloading in the background now. So we might play that next uh, if it works. What happens when a person dies? First, an offering of water is poured over the corpse. Then the undertakers, old men usually, arrange the body in a sitting position like this. They wrap the body carefully in cloth, making a mummy bundle. Then they kill a dog and put it on the corpse's lap. 
Oh, fun. Okay. The mummy bundle is decorated with feathers and flowers, and if the person was rich, with jewels too. Then the bundle is buried or burned. Yeah, cool. All right. Um, so what else we have? Uh, bup, 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 bup. Sickness and health. Um, yeah, we'll check out beliefs. Life <laughs> is full of mysteries, <laughs> and things that can't be explained are believed to be the work of gods. As an Aztec, what myths and legends have you been told? What is a priest's life like? What are death heads? 60 gods for fucking Aztecs? Okay. There's also a goddess of corn. Alright. Let's have a look. Human sacrifices at the temple remind Aztecs of ancient myths and legends about the sufferings of their ancestors. Long ago, the legends say your ancestors were tired and hungry in the desert. They had no home. So they made human sacrifices to their god, Huitzilopochtli, to ask for help. Huitzilopochtli led them to Mexico, where the people settled, growing strong and prosperous. They built a big temple to honor their god. Yeah, as you do. Didn't we sort of cover it? No, we didn't do a priest life for Aztecs, did we? some items. A pottery burner for lighting a fragrant incense called Kupali. The Kupali is used in temples to cover up the smell of blood. This yeah, I. No, nah, just my kettle takes ages to boil. The will also need sharp cactus needles to Always produce drops of his but, own yeah. blood to offer to the gods. He'll need tobacco to smoke or chew to help him stay awake. I think I was doing vigil. that, just making up a thermos of coffee you can to train have as a on hand. If you're willing to work hard, you'll go to a school called Kalmikok to study religion, <laughs> law, and math, and okay. the priests in temple <laughs> ceremonies. If you have a good voice, you might be trained to sing. Music is an important part of many ceremonies. Or you might learn to play bone flutes, shell trumpets, rattles, or big drums. If you're good at math, you'll oh, yeah. to observe the movements of the planets and the stars, letting you calculate the arrival of comets and eclipses. You'll find some parts like, of the um, priest's training oh, very yeah, cause hard. I did have a um, have like coffee pot machine, but I threw it out because the um, nozzles just got too clogged. Um, that usually made coffee a bit quicker, but yeah. As Let's an go Aztec, back to the old-fashioned one, I suppose. All around your city. This skull mask is this made won't get a city, job so I can afford a nice coffee machine. Skull That'd be masks good. are also made of cedar wood and turquoise, like this one. Stone statues of gods and goddesses are often carved with a skull instead of a face. Huge skull racks stand outside Aztec temples. Yeah, I tried cleaning it. Like, I could Others hold real get, like, a skulls. toothbrush up there to clean the nozzle. Um... They, you get the solution that you can sort of run through the machine and just, yeah, couldn't get it to work properly. It was a little bit over pod coffee as well. Like, just not as good as proper coffee. Um, oh yeah, check a bit on farming, I suppose. The Aztecs are very resourceful farmers, making crops thrive in a hostile environment. What are some of your favorite foods? You get frost. Oh, no, I suppose desert sort of environment. Can you plant anything you want whenever you want? Did the Aztecs invent recycling? Okay. Let's learn about farming. Favorite tastes. Maize is the staple of your diet. It's one of the few grains that can survive in the Mexican climate. You also eat lots of sweet potatoes. The Ooh, potato, yeah, I had sweet potato for lunch. Peru, hasn't made it so far north yet. Do you make coffee now, French like rice? No, just in instant. Months. Put it in the cup with some boiling water and honey like Mighty suggested. There are plenty of peppers too, a good source of vitamins. And they come in all colors and varieties, from large and sweet to small and very, very hot. Yep, I know how to make their chilies. Yeah, I got another batch of chilies coming in. I've been fighting aphids for the most part. Get these little green bugs that eat all your leaves and your stuff. And you've got to do like a little mixture of the like chili garlic and um washing up liquid spray it on there gets rid of them reclaimed from the water for farming they do keep coming back in though chinampas, you can grow crops like tomatoes and peppers to build a chinampa you first mark out the plot with posts okay. and fence it with woven branches trees are planted all around so the roots will give support yeah fair enough when your chinampa has been built Fill it with mud scooped from the bottom of the lake, plus dead twigs and vegetable stems. Mix all this together and let it rot. Dig the new ground carefully. Ah, so you do your own pot, compost. But okay. don't plant any seeds yet. You have to wait until the government gives orders. Otherwise, you'll be punished. 
You need a permit to grow your own well, crops? Okay. Plants thrive in your Chinampa. The rich soil and the plentiful water supply make a great environment for them to grow in. Yeah. No, that works quite well. Cool. Um, all right. What are those little wicker buildings you see along the main oh. roads? Actually, they're public <laughs> That's toilets. a shitter. Not only are they No, nah, don't travels, don't take it that far they also too. Serve a don't worry. For farmers, human waste is collected from them each week. It's loaded into boats, then carried across the lake to the nearest chinampas. There, I mean, it's spread in the fields yeah, as up to you. <laughs> It helps to enrich the soil and um, make the crops grow. Not even waste is wasted. I don't know how you do it, actually. Um, yeah. Um, no, if you want, send me a whisper afterwards and I'll give you details. The, um, oh, we didn't, what did we do? No, we did all these ones. Okay, okay. Um, so what else we got? Yeah, we'll finish on old Hernan Cortez and we'll switch over to Scooter's Magic Castle because that should be finished by the time we're, yeah, that's halfway done now. All right, we'll finish on this one. The Aztec Empire would end with the coming of the Spanish Oh, Hernando Cortez. Cortez. Okay. What was the strange news about his arrival? How did Cortez carry out his invasion? Who were his allies? Why did the Spaniards call a certain July night La Noche Triste, the sad night? Yeah, okay. Oh, yeah, they apparently prophesized about the coming of the Spanish, didn't they? Um, the first time break now, we'll go back in six minutes. Well, do you want me to leave? I, if you want, I can do Scooter's Magic Castle tomorrow at a round about this time. So you can watch it then. Up to you, mate. Worst well, comes to worst, you can just watch it back on YouTube because it'll go up on there. Who or what these creatures were, Monte Exoma sent friendly ambassadors. The ambassadors reported back that these new monsters had weapons that could shoot fire. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yep. It would look like fire to Aztecs. Cortes arrived in Mexico with only about 500 soldiers. There was no way such a small force could defeat the mighty Aztec army. So Cortes became allies with the Aztecs' number one enemy, the people of Tlaxcala. The Tlaxcalans hated the Aztecs because their land was always under attack and their soldiers were taken as prisoners Oh, you prisoners got tomorrow off? Yeah, we'll do it tomorrow. The Tlaxcalans so it'll be, be what? To stop this. 2 p.m. here. Uh, so it's Australian Eastern Aztecs. Standard Time here. When Cortes first met Monte so about Zoma, this time tomorrow, except an hour earlier. We'll do it then. Not just as Spanish soldiers. Oh yeah. oh yeah, there was like trading and stuff, and then they just said, "Fuck it, we're taking all your gold." The people of Tenochtitlan hated the Spaniards for their arrogance, cruelty, and dishonesty. Fighting broke out on July 10th, 1520, when Spanish soldiers attacked Aztecs dancing outside the Great Temple. The Spaniards were forced to flee. So many were killed that they called it La Noche um, Triste. I'll just say, I, I've actually gotten rid of my Discord but recently. I'll send you the, um, my thing, no, you can just frame me. Two seconds. As many as 200,000 um, Aztecs died before their leaders surrendered. What's number? I think I can just pop it in there. Yeah, that's my, um, Discord name. Um, alright. La Noche Triste. Alright. Um, so I think we're pretty well done on this one. Unless uh, other people want to, there's something else you guys want to check out. Uh, not much else for Vikings, mummies, uh, Egyptians. Yeah, no, we might leave that one there, but there was a fair bit of content in that one, wasn't there? That was pretty good. Emergy, Grolia Electronic Publishing. Not oh, cool. Alright. I'm watching Death Sandals video, by the way. That's that's who the the person is. So if you want to watch a full playthrough, Death Death Sandals.